Okay, let's get started. Chapter one. So when you're talking about paint.net, there are four key pillars that really allow you to draw great pictures. Now, I'm not saying that that's absolute. There may be an additional pieces that I haven't considered, and please, by all means, if there is anything missing, let me know. I'm, I'm not infallible. But what I can tell you is that, in my experience, these four things have made all of the difference. And they are tools, colors, layers, and effects. If you can master all four of these things, you'll be able to draw some seriously awesome pictures. So today, I wanna to focus in on tools and go through exactly how those work. Okay, so now, um, as you notice, as I said before, when you look at the layout, you can see up here on the upper right-hand side, there's a toolbar, a little hammer. You click that, that'll open up this toolbar right here. Now, the toolbar is important, obviously, because this is how you control everything that you do. This is all of your, the different ways you can draw and create things, okay? So, a lot of these should be familiar to you. You'll notice there's a pencil. Uh, now, just for uh, the sake of this particular exercise, what I'm going to do is add a layer for us, okay? So now, um, and I'll leave this parked right here so you can, uh, you know, and we'll get into layers later on, but for now. Um, the pencil is a single pixel hard line. It's not softened around the edges. It is completely hard. The difference between the pixel and the paintbrush, or rather the pencil and the paintbrush, is that the paintbrush usually will have a little bit of smudging around the edge. What I mean by that is when you zoom in, you can see clearly the pencil is one solid line. The paintbrush, on the other hand, has this kind of quality to it where it smudges the edges. So depending on how hard you want that line to be, you would use the paintbrush versus the pencil. Okay. Now you've also got, obviously, uh, a, a number of other things that you can work with here. This is your selection tool, okay? If I select something using the square, I can then use this blue arrow next to it to move it around. If on the other hand, I want to move the square without moving this item, I just wanna move the square and I say, oop, I actually didn't wanna select this six, I wanted to select that six, I can use the white arrow, which will only move the selection box and not the actual object under the selection box, okay? So that's how you can kind of mix and match. Now, when it comes to selection, let's say, for example, you don't want to select something in a square. Maybe the square doesn't capture the shape just right. So, for example, if I'm drawing something, and let's say that I draw this over here like that, right now, I only want to select this part. I can't select this. The square won't work. See, because I can't, I can't get around it without capturing the other item there, right? So how do I do that? Well, the next thing you have is called the lasso. And the lasso allows you to actually draw your selection around the object you're trying to select, see? So now I can select that and I can move it, all right? Uh, I can move the selection box if I want to, but I wouldn't want to because obviously this is custom made to that. Okay, so now you're getting the idea. You've also got a round selection. If you want to select something in a circle, you can do that. Um, generally speaking, I use these two the most often, okay? There's another uh, tool here that you can use. Let's say, for example, you wanted to select the inside of something. So let's say I draw a weird shape, right? It doesn't make any sense. It's all over the place, right? And I want to select the inside of this shape only. Okay, now I could fill it with a color, but let's say I don't want to fill it. Let's say I want to do some other thing with this. I want to shade it. I want to give it all kinds of character. You know, I could, in theory, if I wanted to, I could try to use this lasso and try to, you know, lasso the whole inside of this thing, but that would take all day and it would be a nightmare. That's why we use this one here, the magic wand. Super useful. Watch how it works. All I have to do is select the inside and boom, it gives me an exact uh, selection inside of this object. So anytime you have a selection area that you want to grab, but it is kind of a weird shape and you want to make sure it's just right, you can use this magic wand as your selection tool. It follows the same principles with the arrows. So if I want to move the inside of the object, see there's not much to move here because it's kind of attached, okay? But I can also move the shape too. So for example, um, if I want to copy and paste something into this space that's got a technique, that's got a certain uh, color to it or a certain texture, I can take that white selection arrow, move it over here, copy and paste that, that, 
that texture, whatever it is, and then bring it back into this object. So that's very important. Okay, now um, you've also got uh, your zoom control, which is right here. I can zoom in, I can zoom out. You can also control your zoom up top sometimes, but we usually, you know, don't usually use it that way. Okay, you got a hand here. What does the hand do? The hand is just a movement tool. I can, I can kind of pan around my screen using this hand. Okay, if I want to fill an object, I use the bucket. Now this goes back to if you've used Microsoft Paint before, you're probably familiar with this. So now I'm going to go to my color wheel and I'm going to select a color just for now. And again, we'll get into colors uh, in a later module. Boom, I can, I can fill with that. Okay, be careful with this though, because this will ruin a picture. You have to undo a lot of times. Now let's talk about the next one here, this one here. This is also a fill function, but it's called gradient. And what does it do? Well, the first thing you'll notice when you look at your color wheel is you've got a primary color, then you've got a secondary color. In this case, my primary color is orange, my secondary color is white. So if I use the gradient function, which is this blue square here, what'll happen is when I go to fill it, it'll actually blend orange to white. Watch, see? And as I stretch these out, I make it kind of a blend between orange and white. See how that works? Now, this is a great tool for a lot of different things. Um, it's awesome for doing uh, backgrounds like skylines, for example. You know, if I want to make the, you know, uh, the rear sky, so let's say, for example, I select the outside here and I do a gradient with, uh, let's say, light blue and white. That's usually the color max that, that works really well for skyline. Um, I can then do a gradient here like this, okay? Let's see, Let's select the outside part, there we go, okay. Sometimes it's it's a little bit tricky, see? And you see how that works? Now I got a, got a skyline behind you, see? And you can put, kind of looks like, this would be sort of the clouds underneath you. So this might be a view from an airplane, whereas if I do it the other way around, it would be more, yeah, like that, see? And now I got something that looks kind of like a background in the distance. So you can see the gradient's a very useful tool uh, for things like that. <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned, I have the paintbrush, okay? The paintbrush uh, gives you the ability to draw, but it also has a softer edge. You can adjust uh, the size. Bear in mind, every single time I select a tool, you'll notice right here, a lot of, there's a lot of different settings that can change, right? So if I'm, uh, you know, looking at different things like so for example if I'm using this paintbrush you'll notice I can control the hardness of, of how uh, you know how that comes out I can also control the width of the paintbrush so if I want a bigger width I can do it that way okay every single tool has different settings and all the settings are here you should just kind of play around with this and figure out what you know what it is so you can select your tool there but just keep in mind that um, everything can be adjusted right across that bar right there okay now you've got your eraser, right? So I can erase all this stuff if I want to. I'm gonna add a new layer. I'm gonna get rid of this layer because it's getting messy now, okay? So I add a clean layer, okay. Um, then I've got the pencil, right? So the pencil, as I said before, and then this. Now let's say, then I've got the, the, the color dropper. Again, these are all functions that you're probably familiar with if you've used Microsoft Paint. Um, this is very useful if you don't know, you know, if, you, if you've made a custom color and you don't have it available to you at your fingertips, you can see it on your screen, but you don't know what it is. It's like, well, it was kind of yellow, but kind of green. I don't really have a, you know, a color. So let's say I, I go here and I make something that's kind of yellow, kind of green. It's a color that doesn't exist, right? And I, and I use it, all right? And then I can't remember exactly where I put this. You know, I come back to this, I save this, I close it. And then now I can't go back and, and figure out what this color was because it was custom. I can use this dropper and it'll just pull that color up. So now when I go to draw, that color is there. So that's a way to solve, ooh, what color was that? I don't remember. That's how that works, okay? Now for the next tool, uh, and uh, forgive me, I did have to stop for a second and load up two new layers because I forgot to include them. Um, but basically, uh, the next two tools down on this toolbar are first the clone stamp uh, and the recolor tool. Neither of which I use that often, but I can kind of go through how they work for you. So the stamp tool, um, the clone stamp, is very useful if you're looking to do uh, photoshopping. So let's uh, bring up a photo. Now, here's a picture of a sailboat. I like it very much, but let's assume for a moment that you wanted to get rid of the sailboat from this picture. One way you could do it is you could take a copy of the sky, here, I'll take that. 
You could take this sky area here and shift it over on top of the boat. That would eliminate the, the boat image and it would just kind of duplicate the sky. All right, but there's a number of problems with that and not really worried about it. Again, I don't use this tool that much, but let me just show you how it works in action. So I take my stamp and let's say I want to put this part of the sky over the top of this sail of the boat, right? So what I would do is I would bring this little X cursor down right on the surface, right? Let's say right about there. And I would hit my left control and click. Now I've got a stamp of this area shifting this way. Then when I go to color this in, watch what happens. It shifts exactly and recreates exactly what's in this area. See? It's a duplicate. I'm duplicating this and shifting everything over. So eventually, if I keep going, you'll see the sail will reappear over here. See? So you would want to do this again and push this sail further over and eventually you would be able to get rid of everything. Now you wouldn't be able to get rid of everything perfectly. You'll notice that when you do that, you see you've got this line right here that is, uh, you know, that basically shows you that there's going to be, uh, you know, some work that's going to have to be done in terms of blending these colors together. But again, that's more of a Photoshop function. Not something I really use too often and I'm not going to use it going into my further tutorials, but it's there so you should know how to use it, okay? The next tool is the recolor tool. Again, not something I really use too often um, or ever really, um, but here's how this works. So let's say I have, and I'll clear this out. Let's say I have this photo right here or this picture, this image right here, okay? Multiple colors um, and, you know, if you'll notice on my primary and secondary colors, I've got my dark blue as primary and my secondary color is the light blue, okay? so. Uh, anytime you use the paintbrush, by the way, I didn't mention this before, if I click with the left mouse button, that is the primary mouse button, let's say, I'll get my primary color. If I click with the right mouse button, that's usually the one that the uh, middle finger is over, um, I'll get my secondary color, okay? So in this particular case, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to change and recolor certain colors. Now I've got, as I said before, dark blue here and light blue here. And let's say I look at this and I say, well, you know, I really like the light blue better for this, for the blue part. So I want to replace all of the dark blue with light blue. How do I do that? Well, the first thing I can do is I can take my fill tool and I can fill same way as I would like that. Whoops, sorry. Got to make sure I'm on the right layer like that. Okay, but you know, if I've got a lot of different things on the screen, you know, that could be a pain. So maybe I don't want to do it that way because it might be too much work. And besides, a lot of times you'll fill and the fill tolerance won't work, right? There's a lot of issues, I guess I'll just leave it at that, that, that make it more complex. Okay, this is an easier way to do that. So essentially I select the recolor tool. And what I'm gonna want to do is I'm gonna want to increase the size of my brush. Right now I'm at 40, I'll make this 150. Uh, you know, actually, you know what, I'll make it, 300 okay so now what I'm gonna do with the recolor tool active and my brush size big and you can see it's the recoloring tool because next to the little X the little uh, site in the middle of that paintbrush you'll see there's that recoloring symbol there um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the center of the blue I'm going to left click remember oh, I'm sorry I'm going to right click because I'm using my secondary color so there you go boom and what that's gonna do is Every, as long as I've clicked on the center, that is that little eyepiece, that little crosshair is in the center of the dark blue, and I and I go to left or right click, what'll happen is it'll only fill that in. But you'll notice as I do that, I can also reverse it. I can left click and bring the dark blue back if I want. But whenever I have a, bear in mind, whenever I have a, a piece that's not quite right like this, Sometimes it'll do that. It'll, it'll leave kind of a, a mark. So you want to be able to do it consistently. Otherwise, you get this kind of back and forth where it's not clean. It kind of it kind of goes back on itself. See that? So, I mean, that, that's also an effect that might work too. Some people actually like that. But you see, I just recolored this part, this green part right here. So let's say, well, you know what? I want to I make this orange out of here. I want to make that blue. But see, it's a way of filling the color and selecting it. It's kind of like the paintbrush and the fill bucket had a baby, right? That, that's really how this tool works. Again, I don't really use it that much, but it's there for your use um, if you should know. Okay, so let's get um, these off of here and I will come back to the 
tools that I do use more off the remaining three tools that we have. Uh, this is text. So text, obviously, you can create text. You can create the different types of text you want. So, uh, you know, you can, uh, you can change it this way. I'll, I'll give you a fair warning about text though. Once you've, you're done typing and you've taken that text box away, so now I switch to something else, I can no longer come back and edit this with the text editor. So I put the text back up here. I can no longer, I can't do like you would normally do. I can't select this and say, okay, now I want to make this a different font. That is now an image. It's not really text, it's just an image. So be forewarned that if you're gonna put text into a picture, you gotta make sure it's exactly right at the moment you put it in there. Another suggestion that I may have for this is if you're gonna include text anywhere in a photo or in, in, in a picture of any kind, uh, make sure you give it its own dedicated layer. That way you can move it around if you have to, okay? All right, last, or sorry, second to last is the line control, right? Now this is, again, very similar to what you've probably seen in a lot of the other programs like Paint, uh, uh, you know, Microsoft Paint. You can stretch a line. Now that's a little bit thick. So that's a 300 width because I remember I had a 300 width brush before. I'm going to bring that down to four. So now I got a nice thin line. Now you'll notice there are there are four intersection points on this line. I don't know if I can zoom in and see that, but you can see that. Maybe if I change the color, it's easier. Yeah. So you can see there's one, two, three, and four. What those are basically were places where you can make the line flex, right? So uh, now I can, I can change that up and, and change it around. Um, there's also other controls, so I can give my, I can turn my line into an arrow if I want. Um, I can turn it, I can have a rounded tip on it if I like. Uh, you know, again, all of the controls are here. If I want to make the line more, you know, make it thicker, that works as well too. But again, lots of different things you can do with lines. Play around with it, see what you think, okay? Lastly is the shape control, right? So in this particular case, uh, I've got a try, or I've got a rectangle. Right, so I can take that rectangle. Once it's placed, I can kind of move it around. I can rotate it, uh, so on and so forth. But once it leaves that, those little uh, uh, little hook points go away. I can't really change its shape. See, I can still adjust it this way. Um, if I come up here, you'll see uh, that it has the ability to become circles. I can do, you know, spheres. I can do lots of different things this way. Right. Um, and I can also, while these little dots are still active, I can change the color. So there you go. See how that works? Okay. Um, I can also change how the shapes come out. So for example, here is a diamond shape, right? And I'm gonna change the, uh, the color of this diamond to green, let's say. Um, but I don't want it to be just a box like this. I can do different things here. I can make it a solid green diamond. I can make it a solid green diamond or or sorry, a uh, green diamond with a blue secondary color filling it, or I can have it like it was before with just the lines. Again, a lot of this stuff is just control, playing around with the settings on how these tools work. So if you have a basic grasp of how these few top tools work along with some of these ones in the middle here, uh, you've got to, you know, you've, you're on your way to being able to draw excellent pictures. Um, but I recommend playing around with these tools until you really get a feel for what you can do with them and you can get really get creative.